Hi, this is Dr. Kevin Kirby. We're going to be talking today about the anatomy and function of uh, the typical running shoe. Uh, the running shoe I'm holding in my hands here, this is the Brooks Launch. It's a recent running shoe. And let's just review just the uh, anatomy and the, um, and the function of the different parts of the running shoe. Well, first of all, the running shoe has two major parts. It's the sole. Uh, the sole is the portion including the white midsole and the bottom black and blue is outer sole in this shoe which would be considered two components of the sole. So the sole is composed of in a running shoe the midsole which is the white portion and the outer sole. The second part of the running shoe is the upper and the upper is the portion of the shoe that is wrapped around the dorsal or top medial, big toe side, lateral aspect, back or posterior aspect, and anterior aspect of the shoe. And this, uh, this uh, is attached firmly to the sole to form one unit which we call the running shoe. Now the running shoe uh, upper has multiple components. Uh, we have in the back we have what's called the Achilles tendon tap or Achilles tendon protector also sometimes it has a notch in it. it's called the Achilles notch on the back of the shoe around the heel we have what's called the heel counter and this is the part of the shoe that wraps around the heel of the foot and is typically going to have inside in most running shoes some sort of a stiffener plate plastic or some other type of stiff material that is going to give stability between the uh, sole of the shoe and also the upper as we extend further into the part that the foot sits down into, this is called the collar of the running shoe. And inside the shoe, we obviously have a tongue. Tongue can be attached on, uh, not attached on either side, and also the tongues can have an attachment uh, to both sides of the inside of the shoe. The front of the shoe is oftentimes called, uh, that covers the top of the foot, is called the vamp of the shoe. The uh, inside of the shoe, which is made of typically a soft fabric, is going to be called the liner. And then the lacing system or closure system, typically in running shoes, is going to be made of laces. And these are the eyelet holes that the laces go through. And then the material that holds the eyelet holes is called the eye stay. So we have also the toe box of the shoe. And in valuing shoes, we want to look not only at the height of the toe box from top to bottom if it's uh, going to be giving the toes more room but also be looking at the width of the running shoe from uh, lateral to medial especially if we're going to be fitting the patient or the uh, individual for having a wider foot and possibly with bunions or tater bunions or a more narrow foot this is something that we want to look for in a shoe in the front of the shoe we have the toe cap and oftentimes in this shoe and in this Brooks launch shoe you can see that the outer sole has been wrapped up into the anterior aspect of the uh, shoe to act as time of, kind of a toe cap and also to protect the uh, toes of the, of the runner and also the shoe upper from abrasions if they're to scuff it on a uh, hard object. So that gives you kind of an anatomy of the shoe. Let's look a little bit at this uh, outer sole. So the outer sole is can have multiple uh, features in it. Most of the manufacturers though have gotten into uh, trying to produce some sort of studded pattern on this and you can see here where we have the outer sole there's a diagonal flex grooves and you can see here as I rotate around you can see the grooves in there and many times the manufacturers will make the outer sole so it has grooves in the metatarsal head so that when I try to flex it it's going to flex at the metatarsal phalanger joint region or underneath the ball of the foot and you don't want the shoe flexing in the mid portion we want it flexing at the uh, forefoot. The other thing we're going to see is that many manufacturers now are trying to make their shoes so that the outer sole I'm sorry the, the midsole here and the upper are firmly attached and in some types of shoes such as the Hoka style shoes they're even bringing the midsole up above the line of the upper to give it more stability in the rear foot. So when we evaluate the shoe, when we're looking at a shoe for a runner, 
and we want to see oh and one more part let's go ahead and go back to the inside of the shoe let's look inside the shoe inside the shoe when we purchase it from the store many of the better shoes now have what we call a sock liner and a sock liner is a removable insole uh, many of the cheaper so many of the cheaper shoes are made with a glued in insole which can typically be easily ripped out but and as you look inside there's, there's going to be different types of uh, shoe uh, footbeds and these footbeds typically are going to be stitched on the side in this shoe we have a flat um, a flat portion inside the shoe footbed that we could put a, a custom foot orthosis or a over-the-counter foot orthosis or we can just go ahead and put the shoe sock liner back in the shoe and uh, have the runner use it like that so what are some of the functions of this shoe so let's talk a little bit about the sole of the shoe and this is uh, the, the thing that makes running shoes characteristic from other shoes is they have a thick midsole so this white material all around the edges here is called the midsole material you can see it's thinner up front it's thicker in the back and you can see here we go thicker in the rear foot and thinner in the forefoot mostly running shoes of today are made with uh, a material called ethylene vinyl acetate ethylene vinyl acid is a blown rubber uh, that is a copolymer of uh, ethylene and vinyl acetate and it's actually if you were to do a microscopic cross-section through that midsole material you'd see a bunch of air bubbles inside the rubber that gives it the a cushioning that is necessary to absorb some of the shock of running. So this EV, ethylene vinyl acetate or EVA is the most common material. It was first used in 1975 in the Brooks Villanova shoe uh, that I actually ran in when I was in college and uh, this Brooks Villanova shoe was not the fancy EVA we have now which is has designs on it and these designs on the side and you can see it a little bit here these designs and the smooth silky, the smooth surface of this is due to a process we call compression molding where they actually take the ethylene vinyl liquid, put it into a mold and make the shoe midsole around a mold and that's called a compression molded EVA which is the most common type of midsole material used now in running shoes and when you go into the running shoe store, see most shoes, you'll see compression molded EVA running shoes. This shoe is a what we would call now a neutral shoe. And neutral shoes just simply, simply mean that we're going to have the midsole material on the medial side and lateral side being of the same density or what we call durometer. Durometer is a measurement of the density. Higher durometers mean a stiffer material that's less compressible. The lower durometer materials are more cushiony and more compressible. In the uh, stability and the uh, motion control markets, we will have on the medial side or big toe side of the uh, running shoe midsole, we'll have generally a gray midsole that's higher durometer and a white midsole material that is lower durometer. So we produce a type of a dynamic varus wedge effect that compresses the lateral midsole more at heel contact than the uh, lateral than the medial midsole, so that we'll get a little bit of a varus wedge effect. It's not true a, a true varus wedge, but during heel impact phase of running, when the foot first hits the ground and running, we will see that this dual density midsole pattern, where you have a higher durometer midsole medially and a lower durometer midsole laterally, will produce a uh, some uh, supination moment on the uh, subtella joint. There's many other features of the sole that we could go through in different shoes, but let's talk a little bit more about the upper. In the upper, one of the things we want to look for is to make sure, like I said before, is the toe box deep enough for the runner? You know, that the, if the runner has hammer toes or a toe that kicks up into the shoe, we'll make sure it has enough height from uh, top to bottom or from inferior to uh, superior in the shoe. We want to make sure that the shoe fits width-wise. As I said before, we want to make sure that the lateral to medial width is wide enough for their foot. In other words, you want to fit against the foot but not crushing the foot. So we want to have it so it's not uh, spreading the upper of the shoe outward too much. But we also don't want it too loose where the person is going to be swimming inside the shoe when they're uh, running. And the main uh, feature, the biomechanical feature of the shoe is that we want to have a shoe that's going to be uh, the, the runner can run in it comfortably. Uh, not create injuries and feel as if they're uh, comfortable in the uh, shoe in uh, practically all situations. Obviously, there's 
different types of running shoes. There's going to be racing flats. There's going to be shoes for trail. There's shoes for running uh, that have more cushion and uh, shoes that have uh, less cushion. Uh, one of the features now, and we'll finish this up, we're talking about heel drop um, heel or heel height differential. The heel drop of the shoe is the difference between the thickness of the midsole at the rear foot minus the thickness of the midsole at the forefoot. And um, in typical, most typical running shoes, uh, traditional shoe designs, those will be about a 12 millimeter difference between the heel and the forefoot or a 12 millimeter heel drop. Many of the uh, more recent running shoes, such as the Hoka shoe, run in the five to four to five millimeter range of uh, heel drop, whereas the um, uh, some of the shoes, such as the Ultra, uh, have a zero heel drop, meaning the height of the uh, EVA or the sole in the rear foot and the forefoot are the exact same heights. So uh, this is Dr. Kevin Kirby finishing up a brief discussion of the anatomy and uh, function of the running shoes. Uh, the important thing is make sure patients are fit correctly uh, for fit and also for function of the running shoe for their running and even walking activities. Thank you.